Good evening. It's a joy to be here to worship the Lord with you this evening. And nice to see some friends here. Um, yeah, this place is filled with a lot of memories. 2019, uh, Rampart and I had been here and uh, we ministered that evening and after that to come here this time with uh, Rampart not being there is a little tough. It is hard. I'm going through a, yeah, if, if it's only by his grace I'm able to come this far, you know. But I want to thank many of you who prayed for us. And I, I want to tell you that your prayers were an encouragement, your words of um, condolences, your support, it was such a big encouragement for us. So I'm grateful to God for keeping my three children and me this far. And I would I'd like to say, here by his grace, we stand. Named a Kirubenal Nam, Nirkurum, Nirmula Mahadirupa, the Vade Sutta, Kirube and Nam, Parkrum. Taking on part of our Mudal Padal or Angila Padal, it is in memory of Rampart. I want to sing this song. It's a song he composed so many, I think probably about 30, 31 years ago, which says, I have a hope so certain deep down in my heart. My eyes shall see one day the promise he has made. I will rejoice in him forever. The Bible is a book of hope. Our God is a God of hope. On the day when my son-in-law came up and said, Auntie, uncle passed away. Those four words changed my life. And at that time, as I was sobbing, uh, I had just then, it was just three days prior to that, I was discharged from the hospital from COVID. Both of us were very sick. And uh, initially, I was serious. It turned the other way around when Rampart fell uh, uh, you know, sick and he moved on. But on the day when my uh, daughter walked into the critical care unit and uh, this doctor had just spotted that his you know, pressure was going down, I'm so grateful my youngest, Rebecca, she was there with her dad and she kept stroking his head saying, Dada, go home, Dada. Dada, go home. God has got us. What she was telling him was, don't worry about us. She was able to say that with a lot of courage. Because the day they brought his body home, um, I asked her only one question. How did daddy finish? So that's the time she told me this. How she told daddy, daddy go home. And his body just relaxed. And in a few seconds, the monitor showed a flat line, you know. But at that time, when my son-in-law told this, the news was immediately passed on to my son-in-law, and he told me this. I remember standing there crying because I was so weak, I could not stand, I was falling off, you know. So I stood there and I was crying. At the same time, when I was crying, the Lord put a verse in my heart at that time. When children cry, you know, they immediately calm down when the parents take their children, right? That was the kind of feeling I felt at that time when God gave me this Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23, which says, Now we have come to the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect. In the Tamil Bible, I don't know Tamil Bible, but I don't know if you can just read that verse, 12, 23. You know, that one line made a lot of sense to me at that time. You know why? The Lord was just, as I was crying, was reminding me, I was there. I know, I, and I am in control. So when you cry, cry with hope. Because you're going to see him one day face to face. I do not know how to explain to you that peace that passeth all understanding that filled my heart. And the comfort that came to me over that verse, you know. That keeps me going. I'm so grateful to God for this Bible. Because when each time when we open the word of God, God begins to speak to us. And the first song which I'm going to do is a song which Rampart composed. So after he passed away, I was telling God, we were planning to come out and do the songs together. Now that he has moved on, what would I do, Lord? And inside my heart came a thought that I should finish that which was left incomplete. 
So that's how this first song, we got hold of a musician who did the song beautifully, you know. And uh, my children are there backing me up in the bridge. Rachel, Johan, and Rebecca. And God has blessed me with two fine son-in-law and a daughter-in-law. So do listen to this song because heaven is a reality. It's just opposite to what Beatles said. Imagine there is no heaven, but the Bible says heaven is a reality. There will be a day where there will be no more sickness, no more pain, no more gunshots. There will be quiet for evermore because the Lamb of God will rule over us. <clears throat> பாடல் ஒரு தமிழ் பாடல் எனக்கு ரொம்ப பிடித்தமான ஒரு பாடல் என்றால் என்னுடைய கணவர் இறந்ததுக்கு பிறகு எனக்கு ரொம்ப வேதனையில் ரொம்ப துக்கத்தில் இருக்கும்போது இந்த பாடல் வந்து நான் கேட்டேன் கேட்டோடனே ஐ தாட் ஐ மஸ்ட் கெட் திஸ் ஐ மஸ்ட் சிங் தி சாங் அண்ட் புட் இட் அப் ஆன் யூடியூப் ஜஸ்ட் லைக் ஹவ் வி டூ த ரெஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த சாங்ஸ் தி சாங் வாஸ் கம்போஸ்ட் பை பிரதர் ரஜீவ் அண்ட் டேவிட் ஐ நோ ஹம் யூ யூ ஹேர்ட் ஆஃப் ஹிம் ஹீஸ் அகெயின் பிக் பியானோ லெஜண்ட் So his wife wrote the lyrics and, his, and he put the melody to the song. The song is a reminder from the chapter which the Lord spoke to me when I was in, 
uh, you know, treated with COVID and I was going from bad to worse. I still remember in Kalyani Hospital, I saw all the doctors looking, you know, standing outside the door and looking at me with a lot of concern because they felt that the medicines were not working on me. So when I saw that, I knew something was going wrong. I did not know by then they were starting to, you know, send SMSs to people saying, please pray, um, Ingla is not doing well. At that time, Rampart was doing good. So I still remember one of the doctors from CMC who told me, please give me an update about your saturation level every day. So that morning, I sent him a message saying, doctor, my oxygen level is dropped down to 80. And uh, he wrote me back a message, you know, with capital bold letter saying, Megla, don't give up. Megla, fight. Megla, fight. You know, so I was just thinking to myself, how can I fight against this virus? I was telling the Lord, this is too strong for me, but not strong for you. You know, you are able to fight this virus. And then that day was a very defining day for me because that afternoon, as I started reading the Bible from Psalm 115, 116, 117, 118, as I started reading, 118, the chapter one, the whole chapter of 118 started speaking to me. So to this day, each time I feel discouraged, each time I feel down, I go back to that. As that beautiful hymn says, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. You know, each time I go back to that word, the Lord gives me strength. Sitting there, lying down there, not sitting there, lying down there, I was reading the Psalm 119, 118, where one, the verse 17 came, you know, jumped uh, out. It said, I will not die, but live to proclaim the works of the Lord. Tamil says, My body is telling I am dying, but God's word is telling me I will live. That was the turning point for me, you know. And I began to trust the Lord. And the next day when they had to take Rampart and I for a CT scan, the second CT scan, my CT scan showed that uh, the COVID is clearing my lungs, but for him it was, you know, it had increased to 75%. Not knowing a few days later, the Lord is going to take him home. But that which me keeps me going is God's word. My daughter, youngest, Rebecca, one day when she was driving me down, she turned and looked at me very, you know, these lawyers have, have a habit of asking very probing questions, you know. So she looked at me and she asked me, Mom, are you angry with God for having for because God took dad home in spite of all our prayers. That was a very heart probing question. But I could look at her and say, though I was crying when I told her that, I said, how can I get angry with God? Because it is from him I have received every good thing, starting with Jesus himself. From him I received the gift of salvation. At the age of eight, I first heard the story of Jesus Christ studying in a school in Harrington Road called Sherwood Hall when my principal would walk in into that classroom and narrated the story of Jesus sitting there as an eight-year-old. Never underestimate the work that you're doing among children because you do not know the power of God's word, you know. Sitting there, and as this lady was telling the story of Jesus, till then, my mom had always taught us from Ramayana and Mahabharata. We had Christian friends who would tell us, to, in, who would invite us for Christmas. And we thought Christmas is good food, good fun. And if you ask many of our Indians, they'll say, it is Santa Claus. We also thought the same. In return, we would invite them for Onam and uh, Deepavali and all those festivals. But sitting there as she started telling the story, that, and she came to the point where Jesus was crucified on the cross, I was so moved, I was crying. I, I remember asking myself a question over and over again. Why did they do this to someone who did nothing but good? But four years later, my dad would die of a heart attack because of all the business problems, leaving my mother at the age of 39 with four children. I was the oldest, 12, all of them were younger leaving them, you no, know, she, when dad left us, mom had nothing except her four children. And she didn't want to go back to Kerala. So from Mumbai, that's where my dad's business place was. So from there, we shifted to Chennai. And it is at that time, the Lord used a lady, our landlady's sister would sing about Jesus. So mom would get so drawn to that songs, she would take all the four of us, because my mom is a beautiful singer. So she'd take all the four of us there and say, sing. 
Can you sing more songs? I find peace. That lady told her who Jesus is. And on that beautiful day, my mother surrendered her life to the Lord. You know, the, when she said he was born of a virgin, he lived a sinless life. He died and rose again, and he has the power to forgive your sins and give you the peace that you're looking for. In her heart, she was so moved that there is a God who would love her so much. And that was the turning point in my mother's life. She gave her life to the Lord. And walking with the Lord, taking decisions for the Lord, she was never ashamed to proclaim to people that she's a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. It was hard. It was tough. But the Lord began to move in a very powerful way in our lives. We started to find out that the God of the Bible is just the same. He hasn't changed. Those who look up to him are never put to shame. So I'm so grateful. And from then on, so, you know, he has been such an amazing father. So when my daughter looked at me and said, Mommy, are you angry with God? I said, I cannot be angry with him because it is from him I received every good thing, including daddy. So he has the power. He has the right to give daddy. He has the right to take him away. I'm so grateful. It is not easy to, you know, to say that, but for the grace he gives us. Sometimes we're so afraid, afraid of facing situations, but let me tell you, if God is allowing us to go through a path, he will give us the strength. He will give us such supernatural strength, which is beyond us. Because to the faithful, the Lord will always show himself faithful. You know, we do our part, the Lord does his part. He is faithful. Once again, this is from Psalm 118, verse 14, where it says, The Lord is my strength and my song. All these songs we've uploaded on YouTube. If you have time, do look into it. Thank you. <clears throat>
Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 7. Yeah. Turn with me to 1 Sam, uh, one, uh, sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we are going to read from 31 onward. And uh, we, have, we had actually followed it through, through the Bible reading. The, song, the story talks about King, uh, you know, David, then as a little shepherd boy, fighting against Goliath. And we know the story that he struck him down with just a stone, right? Tamil or part of the Sunday school, and you can't read it, 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 you can't read it. But behind that is a beautiful story of a young man who walked with God. Now, this I'm going to say in Tamil. There was a school in a Christian management run a school. There was an inspector of schools who visit. Is it okay if I say in Tamil? Would you follow if I say in Tamil? Yeah, this is a Tamil church, so definitely, you see, you know. So, uh, he, uh, so this inspector of school goes to this Christian school, and then he kind of asks the students a lot of questions. So finally he thought, either one of the Christian school, school are Kranal, and now one of the Bible in the Cape and Jolita, or Kavi or Katar, in the Abdicator, or Pine and Nikke, which is at Ermuda, on Nina. Goliatha, Kalala, Yarda Adicha. What a name the Paya Adarmacha. Adarmacha, so now you, you, sir, Nadikavail, sir, Satyama, sir, Nadikavail. So this, he was taken aback by this answer, so he turned and looked at the teacher and said, Yenna, sir, the Goliatha, Kalala, Yar Adichana, he pretty sold around by the one hour sooner, you younger, solding a worry, where than other, Wortha, Wortha, Kalala, Adikar, they were pretty a complaint. So, this is a shock. So, the headmaster is in the headmaster's room. He said, Sir, how do you find a school? Do you think the children answered every question well? Are you satisfied with the way we are running this school? He said, Sir, everything is good. He said, Sir, everything is good. But, the question is, Who is the question? The student is like this. The teacher is like this. I am so shocked. He said, Sir, you sir. This is a big deal, sir. One of them is a big deal. Parents said, how many complaints are you going to resign? So now this became an even greater shock for this man. So he went to the house. He was very sad. He was very sad. He was very sad. He was very sad. He was piping hot cup of coffee. He was very sad. 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 Only now this became a greater shock. So while he was sitting down with his coffee, he said, Hmm, Goliatha, Kallala, Dhani, Ladichan, Urthanu, Deriyala. You know? Now, but here, when you look at the story, it's a very powerful story. We have heard this over and over again. But you know, there are two things that I want to bring to your attention. A young David facing a big giant, and he would look at him and tell one thing. If you would turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17, 
verse 37, he says, And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. You know? Karadi kail in the tapi tapi kevaita andaver, singatil in the singatil kail in the tapu vikyan vaita andaver, yenne in the Philistine in the yenne tapu vikya vallamilor. Where did he get that faith from? How did he have that faith? We talk of David's faith, but you know, the knowledge of God led him to have that kind of faith. கர்த்தரை குறித்துள்ள அறிவின் நிமித்தம் தான் அவன் சொல்கிறான் என்னை இப்படி தப்பு வைக்க த இப்போ தப்பு வைத்த தப்பு வைக்க வைத்த ஆண்டவர் என்னை வந்து இந்த பிலிஸ்தீன் கையிலேருந்து தப்பு வைக்க வல்லவர் கொஞ்சம் நாள் முன்னாடி மை ஃப்ரெண்ட் அண்ட் பென்சில் வேனியா வென் ஷூஸ் ஷீஸ் அண்ட் மேக்லாக்கா உட் யூ லைக் டு வாட்ச் திஸ் டைம் த ஸ்டோரி ஆஃப் டேவிட் இட்ஸ் ரன்னிங் இன் த சைட் அண்ட் சவுண்ட் தியேட்டர் Usually, whenever we go there, she makes it a point to take Rampart and I for that uh, sight and sound. So, we managed to see Moses, then we saw um, Jesus, and this was the third one. But as we were going down, I saw a billboard which said this, God knows you, do you know him? That is a very, you know, very powerful question. Devan ungalai arandirukkarar, ungalukku devanai, nienga devanai arandirukkarirla. David knew God. god he walked with god because there is something in our human nature that we can never trust someone whom we do not know david knew god he had a knowledge of god that's why he could say because he walked with god especially if you read psalm 78 70 and 71 says david skillfully led the led his sheep as a shepherd because he did that god knew he would also lead his people well a principle that we learn there that when you are faithful to god in the few things the lord makes you a master over many things adha unmaya seiyravana ennude janangalai unmayai nadathuvar that is why when david compromised regarding bachiba his god's anger you know smoldered against him because as one lady rightfully brought it out she said it was a misuse of his leadership position that's why god's anger came heavily on david he loved him but then god does disciplines those whom he loves thankfully we know that failure is never final with god and that david turned to the lord and then you see his name in the genealogy of jesus but inga nama paakumbodhu david was a man who walked with god and the confidence la da he is able to face this goliath like in our life la probably we are facing so many challenges probably you cannot even tell it to people but the lord knows the path we are walking through the only thing that we need to do is take time to know god ena sangeetha 46 la solraru be still and know that i am god it is in the midst of all the chaos in in that psalm 46 god just says be still and know that i am god you know one thing that covid has taught me after last year's experience after rampart passed away and the many things that went out of control for me not out of control for god but i learned one thing i keep reminding my, myself over and over again that i am not in control of anything god is in control of everything i might as well not learn to not lose my sleep over anything i've been always been fascinated when jesus was traveling in the boat with his disciples the rest of them are so afraid of the waves and the storm and the raging sea but jesus is sleeping only he could sleep because he is in control over the wind and the waves and the storm namakku enna na first thing prachana varumbo namakku first thing enna pogum nammude thookam pogum illaga the moment you face something that is unsettling you keep mulling over it you are not able to sleep right and andavark just the opposite so that is one thing i learned that no matter what challenges we face we can find a rest in the lord it is something that does not happen overnight it's something the lord works in us now david knew how to walk with god to have a personal relationship with god none of us have the power to atone for our sins only jesus can atone for our 
since. Being, I think it is Billy Sunday who said this, you know, going to a Sunday does not make you any more a Christian than going to a garage makes you a car. Having a personal relationship with the Lord that we can, you know, through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us on the cross of Calvary. Jesus does not want a religion. He wants a relationship with us. What a privilege it is. Each time you pray, you know he is hearing you. He is hearing you as though you are the only one. It's a great privilege. As beautifully as Joseph Scriven composed in his hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus. We can take everything to the Lord in prayer. My uncle, who is a Hindu, he'll always say, Yenamma, you're troubling God with all these small, small things. Already he has to run a big universe, so why do you want to trouble him with the small, small things of life? Have you heard people saying that? So, you know why? That is the God of their own imagination. But when you look at the God of the Bible, he is powerful and he listens to our littlest desire in our heart. He knows everything. David knew God. Because he knew God, he was able to trust God. It frightened Saul. Very strangely, you would know Saul was, uh, uh, he was a very impose, a man of an imposing figure. And uh, here is Saul covering in his boots, quaking in his boots. So are the armies of Israel. And, but here is a little young man who was able to challenge Goliath because he was walking with God. As you know, I was this morning, I was telling, when we see God as big in our lives, we see people the way we need to see people. When God becomes big, people become small. When people become big, God becomes small. The second thing what I really love about David when you read here is you find him saying, look at the way he says, he's answering Saul, our children, your servant, 36, your servant has struck down both lions and bears and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them for he has defied the armies of the living God. David had a zeal regarding God. If they defied the armies of the living God, for David, it was like, it, it was, he took it very personally. The things that happen around us, do they bother us? Or do we say, as it has happened, it will just continue to happen, nothing can change. No. As, I, as yesterday in the Helping Hands for Hospital program, I did this song, that says, carry your candle, run to the darkness, Seek out the lonely, tired and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. What made him face the Philistine was this. Who is he to challenge the armies of the living? God. We need to take time. Because let me tell you, right now we are living in times that there is a lot of blurring the lines that's happening everywhere, you know. But God is calling his people to be a holy generation. And the third thing that we find in uh, David's life was, if you not notice from uh, verse 50, so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. That next line says, there was no sword in the hand of David. He was not used to Saul's armor. It's always amazing to see a great God who calls man and says, what do you have in your hand? He doesn't ask what you don't have. He says, what do you have in your hand? Rod of Moses in Exodus becomes the rod of God. The little boy brought five loaves and two fishes. That was enough for Jesus to feed the multitude. 
All this boy had was five stones. But that was what he was used to. In 2 Corinthians 10, the Bible says in verse 3, the weapons of, uh, uh, that our, our warfare is not carnal. It is spiritual. They are able to bring the mighty strongholds down. One is taking time to know God. We are living in times, uh, we, see, we, we are always living uh, on second-hand revelations. What other people are telling us. It is time to study the word of God personally for us to hear what the Lord is speaking to us. Good, we need teachers, but they can never replace our personal study with the word of God to understand the mind of God. Number one. Number two is intercession, praying, seeking the Lord. Our prayers have reduced to bless me, my mom, my sister Lucy, my father, us four and no more. And the Mari Lama, the Lord calls us into a place of intercession where through prayer we begin to see God moving on our behalf. God answers prayer. How many of you have experienced God answering prayer in your life? I have. I have. But sometimes his answers have also been no. But still that's an answer from God. Muna Adhikariyam, God reminds us to be holy just as, as he is holy. A teaching that is very rarely spoken in our churches much now. It's all about blessings. But the, the primary calling as Leonard Ravenhill says is to call people back to his holiness. Be holy for I the Lord am Holy holiness has nothing to do with what we are donning or wearing or how we dress. I remember one lady coming and telling me, she said, the more I draw closer to the Lord, ma'am, I find myself love, you know, disliking all the bright colors. I love only dull colors like gray and brown. That's not spirituality. So I looked at her and said, please go around, look at the nature. Look at the kind of colors God has created. Not one green is like the other green. Not one red is like the other red. I still remember in 2012 when Ramp and I came first time and we landed in Washington and I looked at, looked at the hills and it was having uh, yellow leaves and orange leaves, you know, and I, I just kept looking at it and I asked this friend of ours who was, who was driving, I said, are they all flowers? He said, no, no, Megla, they're all leaves, green leaves turning into different colors. It, was, it looked like as though God, is, had, God had taken orange paint, yellow paint, just thrown it, you know. It was so beautiful. So I looked at her and said, I don't think that is uh, the right kind of spirituality because God doesn't call us to be a hermit. He calls us to live among people. As someone said, so heavenly minded that we are of no earthly use. That is not the kind of calling God places, us, places upon us. To face challenges, to keep meeting things in the name of Jesus and yet finding that God is faithful to lead us through. Like as we sang in this beautiful uh, last song, he is able to lead us through. What are we resting on today? As, one, as someone said, we will never know Jesus is all we need till Jesus is all we have. God is at work in our lives. He wants to display his power and glory through our lives. But are we willing to walk with God? I'll close with this testimony which Ramp was telling me. It was a few years ago when he had gone to Orissa to be with a brother who was working for IEM. And when he went there with him, this brother's uh, vision is to teach ethno music to his uh, tribal believers who have come to know the Lord. He, uh, so that evening when the seminar was over, Ram calls me from there, from Orissa, and says, Megla, I need a doctor's number. Please call up uh, and find out that doctor's number and pass it on to me. So, and he went on to say there is a participant who is a 22-year-old tribal believer who's just come to attend this session, but from afternoon onward, he's not been able to walk. He, one leg is not working, so what he's doing is he's put his, uh, towel under his leg and he's trying to walk, pull it up and try to somehow managing to walk. So can you just give me this doctor's number? I need to talk to him. 
Now in Orissa at that time, after six o'clock there's a curfew and it's a ne next light belt. Nobody can go out and these are very poor tribal believers who have come to know the Lord and their first generation people. That night Ram tells me he calls up the doctor. Later on he tells me he calls up the doctor. The doctor said, oh my, this is some condition. He gave a medical term and said, please take him to Vizac. Give him a, two injections of which will cost 35,000 each. Now who can afford 35,000 each? You know, none of them can afford that. So that night they prayed and left. They, uh, this brother and uh, Ram left, went back to their room. Meanwhile, here, in the, in the place where this young believer with his friends had stayed, he had told them, look, I, please take me to the restroom. So when these young men carried him, took him to the restroom and brought him back, he felt humiliated. And he started crying. He started crying saying, I have a little son. I'm so young and I'm not unable to walk. By now, he was a crumpled heap. He could not walk. He, from, from his waist down, he just could not walk. He was just a heap there. So he, when he started crying, the rest of the believers gathered around him. They also started crying, but it didn't stop with the tears. They began to pray to God. And you know, the next day, my husband tells me, Megla, this man began walking. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We are his display. We are, you know, placed by God to let the world know that he lives. Today, he's the same God. We read about David, but today, he's the same God who wants to glorify his name in and through each one of our lives. Are we willing to allow the Lord to work through our lives? God is powerful, but the, we, our faith is pro directly proportional to the, to the way we know God. Do we know him? Then we can tell, like Paul, I know in whom I have believed. That which I have committed to him, he is able to keep. Neetrum indrum yendrum marada andavar. Neer matram podu mendu padu thoram bele dilla. Anna unme anna masurne la varubada unme yavi namma kandavar podum anavara. And not a sendu in the first answer matram padi na bana jebith mudike pogren. Would you sing with me? Yehova yire tandeyam devam neer matram podum. Yenaka, and then we'll close with a word of prayer. David knew God, so he trusted God. David had a zeal for God. What affected the name of God, it affected him. If it affected the standards of God, it affected him. He had a zeal for God. David found strength in giving himself to the Lord with what he had. And God prevailed over that situation. In order to say that the part party, we'll just close this session with a word of prayer. Yehovah Devam, just the first answer. Tandeyam Devam, Nir Matram, Podum, Yenak. The Lord knows the way we take. When He has tested us, we'll come forth as gold. Yehovah Yire, Tandeyam Devam. Near Matram Podum Yenak Yehova Rafa Sugam Tarum Devam Um Tarum Bogalal Sugami Yehova Shamma Yen Kuda Yerupi Yen Teva Sandipi Ni matram podum Ni matram podum Ni matram podum Yenak Ni matram podum Ni matram podum Ni matram podum Father, we thank you that in this life's journey, we learn that you are more than enough, O oh Lord. We thank you that the faces that look up to you are never put to shame, O oh Lord. We pray that in the challenges that we face, 
we would learn to be still and know that you are God. We would allow you to speak into our lives, O oh Father, for that is where our strength lies, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh God, that you will give us grace to be faithful witnesses of the Lord, to find our strength in you, to lift up your sweet name, never to lack in zeal, O oh God, and give us grace to offer ourselves to you. We thank you, God, for every resource you've given to us. May we use them all for your glory. May we be able to say like Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Neeringalukku podumana varandavare. Todarandu umda sathi aavi nal engle nadathi arulu. Umakkaga unmai ulla saatshigalaga engle vilanga pannu. எங்களுக்கு நீர் தந்தை விழுந்து நாங்கள் உமக்கு திரும்பி தருகிறோம் கர்த்தாவே உங்களுடைய நாமத்தை உயர்த்தி மயமைப்படுத்தும் பிளஸ் எவ்ரி ஹெட் தேர் இஸ் பவ் டவுன் ஹியர் ஃபாதர் அண்ட் வி ப்ரே தட் இன் திஸ் ஜேர்னி ஆஃப் லைஃப் யூ வில் பி க்ளோரிஃபைட் த்ரூ தர் லைஃப் இன் வாட் எவர் காலிங் யூ பிளேஸ் அப்பான் தெம் தட் தே வில் பி ஃபேத்ஃபுல் லாட் அண்ட் பி ரெடி ஃபார் யோர் கமிங் ஓ மாஸ்டர் I pray for myself that you will give me the strength to keep looking to you and to keep going on for you are my savior you are my lord and you are my father lord i bless you lord In jesus name we pray